everyone. Welcome to Basecamp Office Hours. My name is Kimberly Rhodes, and I'm with 37 Signals, the makers of Basecamp. And hey, so excited to have you here with us for this Office Hours session, specifically for people who work in human resources, want to learn about onboarding, or even how to recruit using Basecamp software. So I'm very excited because we have two people with us from our people team at Basecamp. So you'll get to meet them and they're gonna actually show you their actual projects and how they work within Basecamp. But before we do that, a couple of housekeeping notes. First, if you are here live with us, let me know in the chat, say hello, let us know where you're from. We know we have Basecamp users all over the world, but we always like to know who we're interacting with today. So let us know in the chat. You'll see that on the right side of your screen, there's a couple of icons. The one at the very top is that chat feature. So let us know where you're coming from. Love to see you guys from all over the world. Hello, another Kimberly. Nice to see you from Washington. Laura in Chicago, Arizona, Connecticut. Thanks for joining us live. Like I said, my name is Kimberly and I work with 37 Signals. I have a couple of roles at the company. One of them is to create educational content for our users so they can better understand how to use Basecamp. You can find those videos on our website at basecamp.com slash learn and we'll drop that in the chat so that you can see some of those videos. If you have questions about anything, um, that's a good resource to go to. I also host our company podcast called Rework, which is hosted by me with our two co-founders, Jason Fried and David Heinemeyer Hansen. We have an episode that comes out every week. One just went out live this morning, actually. We'll also drop that in the chat. So if you're looking for a better way to work and run your business, it's a great podcast to listen to. So those are two of the things that I do here. Um, to get you started on our software and what we're doing here, you found the chat, which is great. Just below that is a Q&A section. So I've already preloaded some questions we got when people registered for the session. If you have questions as we're going along today, just drop them in that Q&A section. Also, if you see a question that someone else has posted that you wanna make sure we get to, you can upload it. So let us know if there's things you definitely wanna make sure that we cover. If you'll update those, we'll make sure to get those answered live during the session. And then next, you'll see a poll section. And I'm going to pop this poll in here. We're just curious who you guys are. Do you work in HR? And that's why you're coming to the session today. Do you work for a company, but not specifically in HR and just want to take some information back? Do you own the business and there is no HR department? <laughs> Let us know uh, where you fit in so we can just have a feel for who is with us today in our audience. And again, thanks for being with us live. Um, this will be recorded. You'll get a link to the recording after the session. And actually, we'll be right back here where you joined us today. There'll be a recording just a few minutes after we leave. So if you want to share that with any colleagues, we would love that as well. Um, OK, last but not least, I want to introduce one of my colleagues who is going to be joining us on this webinar. Ashley, hello. Hello. Tell Hi. us about you. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley. I work at Basecamp and I have for over six years now. Um, and a lot of my time is focused on having one-on-one -on -one conversations with you all. So if there's anything that you are unsure about, anything that we talk about today, any specific use case that you might um, just wanna talk through, I'm the one who would be happy to have that conversation with you. So let me know afterwards, I'll be sending out an email um, to make sure that you have that way to get back to us. Amazing. And mm -hmm. Ashley is going to do a lot of our kind of show and tell. We'll have our HR experts showing you how they use their Basecamp projects. And then Ashley will come back and do actual tutorials, the how to's, where you mm -hmm. click, and um, will help me answer some of the questions that we have going on. So before we bring on our special guests, um, I want to tell you a little bit about what they do. First, we have Andrea LaRoe, who's our head of people operations, and Bethany Weedmeyer, who is our recruiter and HR generalist. They do all things related to people at 37 Signals. And they also, one of their responsibilities is planning our twice a year meetups. And I wanna show you just a little video behind the scenes of our latest meetup, which was in New Orleans. They used Basecamp, as you might imagine, to run it. So take a look at this and then we'll bring them on the stage. Andrea Lero 
I'm the head of people operations. Stephanie Wiegmeyer, and I do HR and recruiting here. And I am part of a team of two that plans our two meetups a year. The first project was a meetup planning project. Of course, when you start a project in Basecamp, you can customize it however you want. But for our purposes, when we're planning a meetup, we use message board, to-dos, campfire, and docs and files. And then we really started to dig into to-dos. We use to-do list templates because we have the same tasks that really that need to be accomplished every single time we plan a meetup. Your restaurant selections, your travel planning, setting the agenda is a big one. The amount of to-dos in that meetup planning project is a lot. What do we need to decide? When do we need to decide it? And we assign them deadlines so that we're planning at the pace that we need to. From there, we found Ace Hotel, which is what I'm in right now. We want a hotel that's small enough where we don't feel super separated, but something that can also handle a big group. We like a little character, we like to have our own space, and we have our dedicated conference space where we have our large meetings and some breakout spaces. Once we actually have everything planned and need everyone to know what's going on, we start the all company meetup project. We kick off the project with a message, letting people know where we're going, the hotel we're staying at, and kind of the basic framework of the agenda that we're working with. We have people fly in from all over the world, and we just share updates, whether it's travel restrictions that they need to be aware of, when they need to be there, people have questions. What's the public transportation like in New Orleans? Share, you know, links to different passes that they can buy. Little things that are gonna matter when people are traveling. We can all kind of gather in one place and ask those questions so that everyone knows the answer. So it's not just one-on-one -on -one conversations, it's a conversation that everybody can see. So I'm not having the same conversation 30 times, I'm having it one time in base camp and everyone's made aware of what the outcome is. So we utilize docs and files a lot. We do small group dinners, it's typically about six people for dinner. We put it into just kind of a sign-up sheet. We have six slots for everybody, and then as we made a reservation per restaurant, we check it off in our project. I also post a document that outlines all the group activities that we have planned. I'll schedule things like a boat cruise down the Mississippi River. I tag the people who are signed up to attend so they're automatically notified of where they're supposed to go and when they're supposed to go there. And then right within that document, I link the actual tickets that they're gonna need to get onto the activity. Nobody's hitting me up 20 times in the afternoon. They can just go into the document, click the link we brought directly to their tickets so they can then show on their phone to their tour operator. The whole time the meetup is happening, people are chatting in the campfire constantly. People can communicate in real time about what they're doing. If you're too tired to attend a dinner, a lot of times people are posting campfire that they're not able to attend, so someone else can grab their spot. Sometimes, you know, it'll be after dinner and people might want to grab a nightcap, so they'll post in campfire if anyone wants to join them. And so instead of sending individual messages to people, and we're able to just put it in a ping so that, you know, immediately, you know, about the 80 people in our company can see exactly what's happening in real time. And so Basecamp just helps us be really efficient. Basecamp saves us a ton of time and pain just because people know where they're going, right? They have their activity bookings and their tickets right there and also allows us to enjoy the meetup as well. That's where the actual like fun of the meetup comes in, I think, is because it all takes place asynchronously within Basecamp. Getting along and having a time and just being silly while we're here in New Orleans. Okay, let's bring them to the stage. Andrea LaRoe and Bethany Weedmeyer. How are you guys doing? Hey, Kimberly, doing good. How are you? Doing I'm great. great. So glad to have you here. Andrea, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about what you do here at 37 Signals. Sure. Uh, my name is Andrea LaRoe, as Kimberly said, uh, the head of people ops at Basecamp. I have been with the company, sorry, 37 Signals. I need to <laughs> correct. I've been here for about 12 years, which is what I was about to say. So I need to correct my language now to 37 signals. Uh, so, so in the time I've been here, in that 12 years, we've grown from a team of about 12 or 15 when I joined to a team of about 80. So as 
the company has grown, the HR function has grown. So, uh, you know, people ops at base 37 signals handles everything under the HR umbrella. So we're employee relations and happiness. We are comp and benefits. We are training and development. We're performance management, um, employee development, recruiting, hiring and onboarding, and then basically anything else that comes up, uh, we are more than happy to handle. So I'm thrilled to be here today with all of you and show you how we use Basecamp to manage HR. Amazing. And Bethany, you are newer-ish to Basecamp. Tell us about what you do. 37 seconds. I, <laughs> I am I'm a little bit newer. So I started with 37 Signals um, just over a year ago now. Um, and I do HR and recruiting here. So um, you know, still a little bit new to the Basecamp product even, um, which has been great because I see so much value in it, especially when it comes to the HR function. Um, so really excited to be here and just share a little bit about it with you guys. Amazing. Well, in case you joined us a little bit late, there is a poll where I'm asking you kind of what is your function? Are you an HR? Are you just a business owner? Um, if you'll go to that poll section, it's that third little icon on your right and let us know just so we know who we're talking to. And now, Andrea, I'm going to have you share your screen with us because I know you're going to walk through some projects with us, how you have your Basecamp account set up, which I think will be really helpful for folks who are listening. Totally. All right. Can you guys see that? We sure can. It's perfect. Wonderful. All right. So this is your Basecamp homepage. Just kind of walk us through it and then maybe dive into a couple yeah. projects. <clears throat> That's right. So when I log on to Basecamp every morning, this is what I, this is what I see. Uh, so at the top are my pinned projects. That is what I'm using. Um, you know, these are like my daily drivers. This is when I log on. This is most likely where I'm going to go first. Uh, so I'm going to start over here, actually, at the people operations project. This is our real, as you can see at the top here, these are all the people that are on this project. It's a company-wide project. Uh, and this is the real legitimate project that, uh, that we use at 37 Signals to talk about people operations at the company level. Um, some of the other projects I'm going to walk through in a minute are... Um, kind of mirror images of the actual projects we use so that I'm not showing you guys any confidential information, employee information, but this is the actual true project that we use. Uh, so this project, like I said, is company-wide. All these little avatars at the top here are um, people that work at 37 Signals. So everyone is on this, and this is where Bethany and I communicate company-wide um, things that we want to talk about um, under the People Ops umbrella. So it's going to be our policies, it's going to be, um, you know, messages that we want to send out. Uh, it's going to be, you know, in the campfire. This is our quick chat and and uh, kind of our triage request or request line over here on the left hand side. Uh, so I can, Kimberly, should I walk through each of the features yeah, that'd be and kind great. of how we use them? Cool. Yeah, that'd be great. Because as you guys know, or you may or may not know, and Ashley will show us, you can change your tools in each of your projects. So while this one has a campfire, you could choose to turn that off or on. Um, Ashley will show us how to do that. But Andrew, maybe you can walk us through what each of the tools are and you know why totally. they've been chosen for this particular project. Yeah. Yeah. So I have turned some off because we don't use them. Like automatic check-ins is a feature that's available in any project. That's kind of too big of a, of a, of a thing for us in the people ops, just in this little people ops project. So this is what we've gone with. The request, like I said, it's kind of a request line are, uh, where people will drop um, requests for us, we call, uh, cards. You can see over here on the done side, these are kind of a good example of what those might be. So if an employee has a question about their withholding tax that they don't mind people in, in, um, who are on this project seeing, so questions that aren't confidential, aren't personal, they're going to drop them here. So when they do that, we can. There's none. There's none waiting for me right now. Or I'd show you, but I would click into here, and I would be able to triage them into whether or not we're gonna. You know, this is kind of the working on it section in progress. And then when they're done, they go into our done column. So it's it's a lot of stuff like updating my mailing address or you know, change of address, cool up. So you know, just little requests that people don't mind. Everybody seeing. So the campfire in this project is less about um chatting about a project and we call it a kudos campfire so we use it for happy birthday happy anniversary um if somebody has done something remarkable that their coworkers want to recognize they'll drop it in the kudos campfire a lot of people have select channels like that this is how we manage it in base camp um and people can comment and boost and uh and chime in and in real time 
Over here, we have the message board. These are uh, messages that we want to send out to everyone at the company about people at subjects. Um, so when people get a promotion, that's going to be their manager would probably post it here in the people apps message board. When we start having meetup, uh, like you guys saw in the in the video at the top of the call, when we start start having meetup details to communicate to staff, we'll drop them here in a message. This is before any kind of dedicated project just for the meetup. And then so anything, any, you know, really anything under this kind of HR people apps, people doesn't have to be near Bethany. Anybody's allowed to post here and they can, uh, you know, get their information out this way. And again, people can comment and uh, respond to the meeting or to the Andrea, message. That's exactly what I was going to say, that those gray circles on the right side are how many people have commented. So all of those comments about the Meetup Hotel are all in one place. It is not yes. multiple emails with different people. It's all consolidated in one place, which I think is super helpful, not just from a human resources or people ops perspective, but just base camp in general. Everything stays connected. Yes. So messages, so resources, this is kind of our knowledge center for, um, or I should say one knowledge center for HR information. I'm not going to go into these uh, personal um, folders, but something like benefits, this is where we keep all of our information about our employee benefits or a lot of our information about our employee benefits. So stuff like health insurance, uh, summary of benefits forms, notices from our retirement plan. Um, we go in here, so like participant disclosures and uh, your summary plan descriptions are going to go in here. Notices about PTO. These are things that aren't going to change. So a message is something that's kind of like a memo that you would send out in real time. Documents are pretty static. You can edit them, but once you kind of post a document, at least in our culture, it is, it's a document. It's something that's meant to kind of pretty much stay uh, where it is. So this is a description of a new benefit that we added a little while ago. Here's our EAP uh, info sheet. So this is one place that our employees can go for um, easy access to uh, various facets of our benefits plan. And Ashley, when you jump back in, I'll have you share how you can see if something has changed on the change log. Because what is great about the document section is if you were to replace that, it it, it knows it's all in the same place. Meaning no one's gonna have an old copy of something because you just replace it. It's not so, like you're just emailing another attachment and someone's like, is that the right one? Is it in the right Dropbox folder? Like, am I looking at the right one or the wrong one? Everything is always up to date because you can replace it with a new version. Here's a place where I've done that actually. So our SPD of course changes every year. So whenever I get a new one, I'll replace the file in this, um, in this folder. And then you can also click here and see all the versions of it. Perfect. Uh, so that's the, so, the default um, title for this, this uh, tool is docs and files, but since this is our kind of resource hub for people operations, we have changed the name of this to resources. Uh, this is this is default name is campfire. This default name is I think cart table. I might be wrong. Yeah. Um, so we've changed the titles of the actual tools to better match the way that we use them in Basecamp. And to-dos are just to-dos. Um, there'll always be to-dos. So this is just a list of stuff that we need to do. Um, we're able to assign them as far out as we need to. This is something that I think I created like two years ago. It's our uh, paid, paid Medical Family Leave Act um, uh, insurance policy in the state of New York. We have to renew every two or three years, I forget. So I scheduled that way out like a long time ago. And now look, it's actually coming due in August. I've assigned it to myself, so I'm not gonna forget even though I assigned it to myself two years ago. Um, so that's going to pop up on my, on my Hey menu when it's actually time for me to do that. So you can see there's just, um, a lot of done to do's, uh, that you're able to see, even though they're done. So you can kind of go back in time and see what, what you've accomplished. Love that. And then the only other section I think we skipped is schedule and it looks like schedule. there's birthdays and anniversaries on there. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, um, in people apps, mainly it's it's like one on one meetings that I'll schedule um, that don't really have another place to go. I'll throw them in here. Um, managers are kind of it looks like they're having a catch up call on Monday, so they've they've put that in here. But oh, mostly it's birthdays and, and anniversaries. I love that, and and like Andrea said, this is a project that everyone in the entire company has access to. Uh, so that's kind of it for people apps. This is just the kind of the feed of what's happening um, day by day hour by hour. Uh, so that's how we use a company-wide people ops um, project in Basecamp. And then if um, 
I saw a question or one of the pre-filled questions was about performance management. So yes. that would, if I want to move on to that, I can go back to my homepage. Um, yes. I think the question was, how do you manage employee performance ratings using Basecamp? Yeah. So this would be an example. So people ops is our, our big company wide. Everybody has access to it. Let's share all the information we can in our people ops project. Um, when we're talking about like one-to-one -one relationships or team relationships or performance management, where I'm working with a manager um, or managers on a team um, about their their team's performance, that's when we go into these smaller projects. Um, this again is a not a real project. There's no actual employee information in here, um, but this mirrors very closely um, a project that I would have with a with a manager or managers on a specific team. Uh, so this would be, it's just me and Bethany on this fake project, but otherwise there would be several more people here. So this would be, a, so it's limited access, right? So I'm able to have conversations and share documents and, um, you know, keep track of, of things that not everyone's going to see. It's just going to be these groups, the people who are here, the people that you've set up um, when you start the project. Those are the only people that are going to be able to see what's going on in here. So we're able to have conversations about performance. We're able to store performance reviews. We're able to schedule those reviews. We're able to keep track of um, all of our employee files. So one-on-one -on -one notes can go in here. Performance improvement plans can go in here per person or really however you are and organize it. We choose to organize it by employee um, in these manager um, projects that I have, of which I have like 15, right? So it's like per team, I have like one, one per person, one per manager. Um, so we choose to organize it, by, organize it by person. So it's, it's going to be, you know, your annual reviews go in here, your one-on-one -on -one notes go in here. This one, you know, usually like people will edit it. So it'll be, you know, my one-on-one -on -one today, June 14th. And then I have another one-on-one -on -one next week. So I'm going to add here. I'm going to go, okay, on June 23rd, we talked about this. And then I can, you know, save it. So it saves like a um, a living document really of, of all the stuff that you've talked about in your one-on-one -on -one so that you can refer back. So there's a record of it. Um, so, so that's how we usually, so most managers are going to record their one-on-ones and document their one-on-ones uh, in their management project. And that and so, kind of answers, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Andrew. It kind sure. of answers Shalanda's question as well, is how do you separate views in Basecamp by departments? And we use individual projects. So each project, only the people who you've invited into that project can see it. And so that's how we're separating things by departments. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if I can, so you can see here, I'm not gonna go into them, but these are the projects that we use. So there's like management QA team, management or ops team, marketing team, design, commercial. So those are all, small projects, it's going to be me, the manager, the team leads, like people that only need the, you know, only the people on the project that need to know what's going on. So that's from an HR perspective, that's how we separate out by department. And while you're talking about that on evaluations, someone has asked if we use it for evaluations, performance reviews, you've talked about that. What about for KPIs and 360s? I know these we, are things yeah, we don't do. We don't do that. Yeah. We just do a pretty, our, our performance review process is pretty straightforward. We I actually, should, uh, actually, these aren't real, but um, we have a scorecard that is um, that we use per discipline. Of course, they're different, uh, where we assess our skills every, um, you know, during every review period. We also have a career progression framework for every discipline, for every job position. Um, and these are all stored in the management project. And they're also shared with the, the employees, of course. Um, and we have a questionnaire. So the... Basic, our basic performance management or performance review process is employee completes a questionnaire, shares with the manager, manager completes the scorecard, shares with, and a questionnaire, shares with the employee. They come together to discuss and, uh, and that's kind of it. And the cadence that we do it is um, for new hires, they have reviews at three months, six months, and 12 months. And then after that 12 month mark, it's annual thereafter for all employees. Awesome. Uh, okay. Andrew, so, what else do you want to show us on your side before we move on to onboarding? Maybe templates, I think. Sure. You to walk us through? Yeah. So we have a selection of templates that we, that Bethany and I use. Um, I always forget how to do this. All right. Make a new project, use a template, and I'll just you go got edit, it. to edit templates. You got it. All right. There we go. Um, I'm always clicking around for a minute. That was really lucky that I managed to do that the first time that time. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, so we have a couple, these are, this is the whole company's templates, right? So everybody, um, company can see our templates page, but Bethany and I primarily use the hiring template. I'm not going to go into them, but hiring template. And then these are our onboarding templates here. We have different onboarding templates per role or kind of like per area. So when we hire what we call non-tech, it's so like, it's so bad, but like, that would be like me. If we hire another me, me I'm non-tech. <laughs> uh, so that would be. <laughs> That would be one version of our onboarding template. So that's going to be like fewer things, you know, on the on fewer technical accounts. Um, ops is our is our, our SREs, our um, DevOps people. So that's like highly technical. So there's a lot more on the technical account side there. And then programmer is its own specific thing. Just they have their own separate accounts. So we have kind of um, they're very similar when you look at them, but uh, they're different enough that we have different versions of templates. So we don't have to remember. Um, what to change per role each time we spin up a new project. Uh, and then of course we have our offboarding template when we, when someone resigns uh, or gets terminated, we can spin up a template to um, undo what we did when we onboarded them. Uh, and that's the same for everybody that we just run through. Uh, and the one thing I should say about, I, I do want to say about templates, I will go into this one. Once this was like a, a relatively new feature, you can assign to do's to people, um, in the template rather than waiting until you make an actual project it's been a lifesaver for us right because like these are all the offboarding um steps that we take and not that we do a lot of offboarding but when you do it you know just going through and, and assigning these um was just another step that now we don't have to do now it's done ahead of time so that was really helpful uh so speaking of templates um we also wanted to walk through one of our onboarding projects, which would come Great. from one of those onboarding templates. So we can uh, we can do that. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah, that's okay. perfect. Let me just interrupt for one second to say, mm -hmm. when Ashley comes on, we'll kind of show you the template, how to spin up a project from a new template. And what Andrea uses is project templates. There's also a way to do a to-do list template, which somebody asked about. Kimberly, you asked about that. So we'll show you that um, in just a bit. Cool. Uh, so this is our welcome project. We call them welcome projects, but it is, uh, you know, a person specific version of the um, onboarding project template. So from the onboarding, you know, this one from the onboarding template, we're going to start a new project. And then from there comes our welcome project when we personalize it for the person that we're welcoming. Um, so First is the message. Again, we kind of customize the tools. I think there's something missing here that we have in uh, in the People Ops project, but that's because we've customized it for what we need this project for, which is just for welcoming our new employee, Stanley, uh, a new site reliability engineer in the US. Um, so again, the messages, this is just for messages. <laughs> uh, so this is, I, this is something that I personalize for everybody that we welcome to the company. Uh, it's just a welcome. It's an intro. It's a kind of they all you know they know this. They've been they've been told this throughout their their hiring and their onboarding. But it's just kind of in one place. I'm going to outline what they should expect for the first couple of days um, at 30 second signals and some notes about how to use Basecamp, some recordings they might want to watch, um, some features they look out for, and then just a general kind of like please please ask questions because uh, everyone's more than more than happy to have you here. And Andrea, I just popped up Abdul's question. So you have an onboarding project for each new employee, and then you it do. lasts. Tell, tell us about that when you close. Yeah, it. we have an onboarding project for everybody. We start, we kick them off um, a few weeks before they start, or pretty much as soon as we know their start date, we'll kick off the welcome project so that we can start populating it. Um, it does last a few months. So the I'll go into the to do's, which probably illustrate what I'm going to say better than I could say it. So there are to do lists for kind of each segment of onboarding. So the first is before you start. This is the hopefully the new hire is not going to see any of these. So these are things that the manager is responsible for and that Bethany and I are responsible for before our person even joins the company. So in the weeks leading up to their first day, these are the things that we're supposed to take care of to get them to have to have a smooth onboarding process for them. Uh, and then they're segmented out, segmented out by days or weeks and whose tasks they are. So is it the new hires task or is it our company tasks? So day one, super easy for the new folks um, or for us. We just kind of welcome them and get them checked in. 
And then uh, there's lots of kind of technical accounts that they need to add themselves to. Ops is heavily involved when, you know, when we're adding them to all these services that we use. Um, so these, this is kind of how we track it. So the idea is you'd start at the top and you'd work your way down. I would work my way down. Ops would work their way down. And the new employee would work their way down the to-do list day by day. Uh, and then we kind of get to week one, the new employee's tasks month one, their tasks. And then actually, usually towards the end of this, there's going to be a, um, a cycle list too. So depending on when the person joins the company, there's going to be some goals for basically for their first eight weeks, their first few months. Um, and those are going to be more job related than uh, kind of accounting and, and admin related. Uh, so yeah, we do close it when it's done, right? So this is the to-do list is primarily why we have the welcome project. That's like the biggest where we're, where we're spending the most time in these welcome projects. Um, but then we also have things like our schedule, first day schedule. This is something that Bethany or I will send out to the new hire um, like the day before they start. And so they know who they're meeting and when, excuse me, um, and just, you know, generally what to expect. So they're not coming in totally blind. And Andrew, will you scroll down just a little bit? Because I mm -hmm. noticed on that, Bethany had opened a public link for that. So I'm assuming you've made a public link, you're sending it to the employee, even though they don't yet have access to the project. Is yes. that a true statement? That's right. So we don't invite them to, we don't invite our new hires to Basecamp or to any accounts until their first day, just because, I mean, that's work, right? We don't want them working over the weekend because we sent them a link to Basecamp and now they've, you know, curiosity is going to get the better of them and they're going to be poking around the account for the Saturday and Sunday before they start. So Bethany will turn on public sharing, which is up here, uh, so that she can send them in an email a link to the schedule. And then they that's all they're gonna see. They're gonna see a page with the schedule on it and not access to the rest of the project or to the to the account at large. Perfect. And I think uh, during mm -hmm. this process, Saad, we've answered your question about how do you approach onboarding digitally, which is basically through Basecamp. But hit us up in the Q&A if there's something we missed that you want to know. Um, so to-dos, like I said, that's where we live mostly in our welcome projects. Uh, docs and files are for, um, we have generally shared this helpful links. This is edited per employee, depending on what job they're coming into, uh, because we share their primary teams and projects and links to those projects. Um, and, you know, stuff that might be useful to them. We try to keep this really limited. We have hundreds probably, I don't even know, of projects in our Basecamp account. I try really hard to limit new hire exposure to projects so that they're not overwhelmed. They're not getting like inundated with notifications on their during their first week when they don't need all that background noise. Uh, so we keep this list relatively short and focused. Um, and then just kind of some information at the bottom uh, that links out to like um, just kind of technical and company references that they might find useful. Uh, links to the books, links to some guides, product histories, et cetera. Uh, and then some notes on getting started. So these documents change, you know, depending on the on the role, like I said, um, kind of the more technical stuff, the, the more resources they get. Campfires for chatting. When you're new, you have a lot of questions. You don't know where to put them. Uh, so you can throw them in the campfire um, and somebody who's on your welcome project, which is typically me, Bethany, new hire manager and probably a couple other teammates um you can throw your your question in a campfire if you're like you know panicked about where something lives and, and you want to find it without trying to ping somebody on your first day uh and then schedule is, is pretty straightforward this is oh i lost my events um this is just calendar events uh so you can you know put zoom links in here you can, uh, you know, you add people. So if it's an, a verification call with Bethany, she's going to add herself so that she knows um, to attend. When the new hire starts, we would also add them here. Um, and then here again, just kind of, you know, pretty straightforward calendars. And so that's going to show up depending on who's on the event that will show up on their, uh, their schedule, which is here. Perfect. Okay, Andrea, I'm going to ask you Philip's question, which is more of a theoretical one. Mm -hmm. I know we need Basecamp to help us create an efficient, repeatable onboarding and offboarding process. How can I convince my peers 
that we can't accomplish that working strictly from our email? I'm sure you have. Ooh, that's a big question. (laughs) (laughs) Why can they just not onboard and offboard via email messages? I mean, I suppose you could. Uh, I also, I agree that it feels inefficient. Um, So, you know, it's like you're seeing here, this welcome project, this onboarding project, it, everything's in one place. So, and, and there's going to be everybody, everybody's going to be on the same page. So everyone, not just the new hire, right? So instead of this like one-to-one or even like when you're CCing people, it, there's not like a sense of everyone being in the same room, right? So when you're onboarding remotely, especially, it's super helpful in Basecamp to feel like you're all in the office together. It's not email, you know, and people are CC'd or BCC. You don't know, maybe somebody's BCC'd and like there's all this communication going back and forth and there's these super long threads that you can't follow. Um, it doesn't feel very human to me. Um, it's, you know, it's certainly possible. You can send your I-9s and your W-4s and your contracts through email and you get them back and it's fine. It works. You can, you can tell them what time to start working. But saying hi in campfire at nine o'clock on Monday feels a lot and in real time when there are people around looking at your message and they're boosting it and there's emojis and they're, you know, feels a little bit more human and like you're in an office and that you're all there together. And um, especially from a new hire perspective, you feel like there's someone around, like if it's, you're not totally out there on your own and there's crickets. Uh, So everyone's here together in this project. You see them as soon as you go into the project, you see their beautiful faces right up here. Uh, You see some like forward momentum with the to-do list. So, you know, like I said, we kind of start at the top and work our way down. I'm working my way down. Ops is working their way down. The new hire is. So there's this sense of forward motion um, and and completion. Like you're you're getting to the end of onboarding. You can see it physically. Uh, And and it's, again, I think everything being in one place, communication, real time, uh, and and, um, just a sense of community, especially for new hires, especially in a remote setting is just so, so important. Um, and then we also can like schedule these calls and, you know, everything, you can just see it all right there and, and, and feel like that you're, um, you're supporting your new person in, in a, an appropriate way. I'm going to just jump in because I am the newest of all of us on here. So I've been with the company almost 10 months. And I know for me, just having a place to go when I very first started was helpful. It's like you have a home base and these yeah. are the things that you should be working on. You know, that first day is always like, okay, like what, what am I really supposed to be doing? Like hour one, what am I doing? And yeah. this is like, you're, here's your setup, like your setup for success in the beginning in yeah. this way. And you're in a new place. Like we're working remotely. You're in your home. You're not like going to work, right? You're like sitting in the same desk you've always sat in. So going into Basecamp, going into your project, your personal welcome project is it's like a, it's special in its own way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say even for companies that aren't remote, Mm -hmm. still having that place where like you go back to your desk and you have a place to log into, I think it's helpful. You have your to do's, you know where to find documents. You're never having to like look at the cubicle next to you and ask where to find your insurance information because it's all in Basecamp. Anything else onboarding, um, Andrea, before we switch to recruiting? Um, Let me just check my notes. I think I covered... Uh, yeah, the only zero. only thing I would say that is not super visible on here is the way to assign these to dos. That's also really helpful, uh, not only for the people who are being assigned to dos to like keep track of their own work, but for the new hire. So if I see, um, you know, that Nick is in charge of setting up my credit card, I know to go to Nick. You know, I, I could probably deduce that I should go to Nick with questions about my credit card, or I, I will post in that to do questions to Nick about my credit card. Um, and he will get them and he will respond. So it's uh, the to do's are also it's like, you know, it seems kind of oops, sorry, <laughs> uh, seems super obvious, but it's a uh, it's kind of a, a nice little bonus. I love that. Thank you for walking through that with all of us. That was very helpful. <laughs> Bethany, you do recruiting here and I know you use Basecamp for recruiting. Um, I was lucky enough to be on the inside of that as we hired someone on our team recently. And I was like, oh, this is a fascinating process. Do you want to kind of walk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah, so I am super excited about um, using Basecamp for recruiting. Um, You know, I think a lot of recruiters in my community complain about 
um, not getting enough hiring manager engagement, um, the timelines feeling really, you know, really gray, um, and just kind of this general feeling of chaos and not feeling like you have a hold on the process. And um, so I am super excited about Basecamp because it really addresses all of those things. Um, so we have this project over here, um, hiring an SRE. And um, so if we just want to go into that, this is fake. So if you have been a candidate any, at any point, I promise you're not in here. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the message board first. Um, this is really a central place for us to really get on the same page. So I'll typically write up a hiring plan um, and, you know, let them know at the end if anything looks different or if you don't want to be, you know, doing this during the process, let me know. Um, and we do that before we even post a job. Um, we want to be ready. We don't want to waste anyone's time. Um, and so the message board is really helpful in terms of that. And um, you can comment on the hiring plan and on these message boards as well. So just really gives us a chance to get on the same page without having a ton of meetings. Um, and so I think that part is really important. And then same with interviews. You know, if we, uh, you know, add hiring team members um, throughout the process, maybe they're just coming in at the third round. Um, then I want them to know what's going on, you know, what candidates they'll be talking to and where they can go for resources because, um, you know, not everybody is immediately, you know, ready to interview and feels comfortable. So we do our best to utilize that as well. And then for the next one, doc some files. This is my favorite. Um, so uh, I really like your color coding on this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love the code, the color coding. Um, <laughs> um, so we use it for every single round. Um, I like it to be really organized. I like to have documentation for everything during the recruitment process. So um, we post the initial interview template and um, that helps us, you know, just make sure that we're asking all the candidates the same questions. Um, I also get feedback during my initial interview from the hiring manager and make sure that I'm getting the information they want to know before they decide on the next round. Um, I do color code everything, so my <laughs> templates are always purple. Um, if I, you know, suggest that someone should move through, I mark them as green. Yellow is when I'm a little bit on the edge, and red is my recommendation to not move forward. Um, so poor Dwight, true in this situation. Um, but <laughs> and then I write up um, my notes on on everyone throughout it, just so that again we're avoiding those meetings and we're able to just really talk in um, through these, and they can make a decision and take their time making it too. Um, and then we also do at home exercises. So, um, you know, the team shares their thoughts on those kind of the same system of um, green, yellow and red. Um, and that's really the team is jumping in there. It's very collaborative. You know, they'll write their thoughts um, and then I'll be able to see that as well. And Andrea agrees on Angela. So that's super <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, and then the last one is, uh, you know, round three in team interviews. This is super helpful to have docs and files in this because, um, you know, a lot of times Andrea or I will create templates to kind of help them get started. Um, you know, they can edit in there and make changes. And then even if we're having different people on the team interview, they're still asking the same questions and we're still getting the same information. And um, so that's really important. And then, um, you know, we also include tips and stuff like that for them as well. And, and for this, you know, we'll do um, a folder instead of just individual documents so that people can put their own thoughts and notes in there, you know, if we have a couple of people on one interview or something like that. Um, also in docs and files, um, we do um, a job description. So if we want to go into there. Um, the job description in docs and files is really helpful um, just because um, we don't just, you know, close our eyes and post whatever we find in terms of a job description. Um, we have a lot of people look through it. We have a lot of people editing them. Um, and so it's super nice here because we can kind of see those edits um, as they come through. Um, and, you know, people can add their suggestions as well. Um, so that's been super, super helpful. And then the last thing in Docs and Files is we share the screening process. So, um, you know, as Andrea mentioned, we've grown quite a bit which means that we also have a lot of new hiring managers. And so we'll talk about um, just kind of give them some instructions, make sure that they feel comfortable. Um, again, avoiding that, you know, that 30 minute call of sitting there on screen share, trying to figure it out together. Um, it just kind of gives them the opportunity to figure that out themselves. So um, yeah, that's what we use docs and files for.
And then to do's, I lied. I think to do's is my favorite in this project. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, as I kind of talked about, you know, that that hiring manager engagement and, you know, kind of accountability to keeping things keep things on time. I know if you're in the TA world, you understand what I mean by that. And um, and so we plan out our timeline ahead of time, again, before we even post. Um, and that way we're, you know, very aware of, you know, how long this process can take. We're looking, you know, to see if we can cut anything down, make the process less lengthy. Um, and then when I am doing, you know, those initial interviews, I'm able to give our candidates true timelines, right? I'm able to say, you'll probably do your exercise around these dates. We'll probably get, a, get an offer out on this date. And it just gives a much more transparent process. And then on the other side of that, our hiring manager is able to see this entire timeline as well. So they know way ahead of time, sometimes, you know, a month ahead of time, okay, I need to set some time aside on this week to review exercises, or I need to leave my schedule a little bit more open because final interviews will be during this time. Um, so it's really, really helpful in just setting expectations for everybody immediately. Um, and then you're kind of avoiding the, you know, the awkward messages like, you know, hey, looks like we haven't done anything for a week in here or stuff like that. So um, I really love to-dos. Andrea, did I miss anything about to-dos that you feel like would be important? Uh, no, I think you got it. I'm okay. going to jump in when Ashley comes and does her magic behind the computer things. I'm going to have her show moving bulk dates. So let's just say there's a lot of to-dos on this list, Bethany. And if something goes awry, someone's on vacation, the hiring manager's on vacation for a week and we need to move things forward, um, there's a way to easily do that. So you can push things forward without having to go into every single to-do. So that is helpful. Mm. Um, with that, if you guys don't have anything else, I'm going to bring Ashley, who I've been talking about a lot. She's been patiently waiting in the wings. She is who you would meet with if you were doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation and a demo. So we will get her out here. Ashley's going to share her screen. We're going to knock out some of these final questions in the last few minutes that we have with you guys. And um, Andrew and Bethany, you guys stick with us too, because you can answer some things from us on a, a HR perspective. Ashley, welcome back. Hello. Hello. I'm, hopefully I am sharing my screen appropriately. You are. And let's just dive in with this one that we have at the top. Can you set up a to-do template with a set of to-do items? So we saw project templates from Andrea where you can start an entire project and spin that up, but you can also do that with just a to-do list. So Ashley, take it away. So from the home screen, we are looking like we are making a new project, but secretly there's an option here to make a to-do list template. Um, and so when you're in this space, there's where you can say, you know what? Every time we have a podcast episode, I know that I want to schedule the recording, then record the podcast, you know, all of these different things that we know in advance of what we want to do. We can even get specific in here and group them together and say, you know what, this is actually the top priority for what, um, for whatever, you know, every time we have this, this particular list involved. So once we adjust them, we can go to any project and let's go ahead and pull this one up. And then in the to do section, when we make a new list, you'll see that link on the right hand side that says use a to do list template. So if um, if a project feels like it might be too much, which it easily could be, then go ahead and consider to do list templates, because then we can bring this information into the project that already exists. And it's already pre um, pre assigned. And if you had dates in there, it would be um, populated with dates as well. Love it. Okay, while we're talking about to-dos, I'm going to knock out this question from kind of both Kimberly and Philip, which yeah. is, when do you use to-dos on the card table versus creating a list of to-dos? I have my own opinion on that, but Ashley, you jump yeah. in and I'll kind of give yeah. my two cents as well. Definitely. And you know, Laura answered this a little bit in the, in the chat and it was also correct. But when there is work that does not need a whole lot of my creative thinking, or my work is not going to follow a, a progression. I'm just going to post it on LinkedIn. Then it's if it's a binary done or not done, I find that to do's are really easy for me to to fall back on. If my work instead falls, um, let me go back to the project page, feels a little bit more like there's a process to it. Maybe in here, I have a section called needs feedback. Maybe we have like a final review or you know whatever else it is then I would maybe take this card 
and be able to move it through these different sections. And then folks will know, they'll be able to see, all right, is there a bottleneck in the feedback section? Or um, what's happening in the final review? Or maybe in the final review, we have somebody out. And so I need to enable something that's called on hold. So I would say that you can really use either. Um, you can make it work for whatever it is you're trying to do, but we like having the option. Um, and you might find that even having both tools enabled for whatever it is your project is, might be the most useful option too. I love that. And I'm going to drop in the chat. I have a video all about using the card table. And at the end, I talk about kind of the differences between to do's and card table, and then even show some examples of how some of our different departments at Basecamp use the card table function. Our developers use it for bugs, and there's several other departments who use card table for that progressive work. So I just dropped that in the chat for you guys. Um, Ashley, can we jump? Ooh, Philip, to do because you like the hill chart. Philip, what you don't know is Ashley loves the hill chart. I love hill charts. I love hill charts. They're like the first visual um, thing that I like really appreciated about Basecamp in terms of the this kind of color coded in terms of the uh, the to do's. So yes, of course, you can add colors here, which is really pleasant. But I need to know where this podcast is in relation to the advertising campaign in relation to social media. And so I can track all of these on a hill chart, which takes things from either is this in the figuring things out stage on the left hand side? Or are we making it happen on the right hand side? So then I can update this manually where I go, we've done this podcast thing a hundred times. So we don't really have a whole lot to figure out. We just have to get it done. We've never done this type of advertising campaign. So it feels like it's in the early stages. And social media, we actually have a lot of things checked off. And this is the update for everyone in the project. You can save the update, which gives you a nice visual, which if you want to share with other people, a quick screenshot works wonders. But also for the folks who are on this project, they can click on last updated a second ago and then over time see the progression of where things were and how people felt about it. And you can even support anybody's updates as well and discuss those updates specifically. So then from a distance, you can kind of see, even if you're not very involved in this project, where things are um, kind of in a linear bell curve way. Ashley's a huge hill chart fan. So Philip, mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked that question. While we're talking about to-dos, Ashley, will you show us the bulk uh, date changes that I mentioned? Yeah. For yeah, any time you have a long list, this is like a game changer of pushing things forward in time. For sure, let me take these that, these already have dates on them. So what I can do is I can multi-select and we can show you kind of how to do that. Um, but you would just click on one of these three lines to the left of your task, hold down command and cl collect the others. And this is where you can do multiple things. If I wanna bulk assign this to like one person, several people, I can do that. But I say I wanna change the dates for these. I can move them all to one single date, always a great option. But if I kind of like how they're staggered, then I can shift the due dates forward. We can do two weeks maybe, save the changes and we'll see how June 2nd then became June 16th or you know, whatever it is. So things can be moved and adjusted if you need to um, at any time using that bulk option. And that's on the newer side. So if you are returning to Basecamp and maybe you've used it in the past, please know that this is here and it's a fantastic feature, one of my favorites. Um, Ashley, let's talk about the schedule for a minute. So question is, do people default to using schedule instead of their Google Calendar? I know Laura answered that in the chat, but maybe you can show us how you can subscribe to a schedule. I know I personally use my Apple Calendar subscribed yeah. from Basecamp. Definitely. So I'm pulling the schedule tool up here um, and we can get into that as well, how to bring these tools in. But I think what's going to be most interesting here is that when you're in this particular, um, when you have all, and anything with a due date that, you know, all of mine were kind of in the past, but when you have anything with a due date, then they are going to populate on this schedule. And this works out great because then everything related to this project is going to be in this one location. But if you like Google, if you use Apple, if you're um, sticking with Outlook, then you have the option to get this information into that external calendar that you're already using. And so you even have a choice here to decide, do I wanna show events only or events with my assignments and due dates? And so this is just gonna create a copy in your external calendar so that you can toggle that on and off. So 
your family's birthdays are going to be there alongside um, any any meetings that you have or um, the option to create this TikTok account. That's also going to show up on your external calendar if you want that choice. So it's really up to you, but just know that this is a one way sync so that um, the things that are already in Google cannot be put into Basecamp, but what's in Basecamp can absolutely be put into Google. And what I love about this is you can choose by project which calendars you're subscribed to. So if you want to just subscribe to your department calendar and nothing else, you can just subscribe to that. If you wanted to just subscribe to only the things that you are personally invited to, then you would go to your My Stuff and go to My Schedule, and then you could subscribe to that calendar. That's personally what I do is I'm just mm -hmm. subscribed to my own personal calendar. Bethany and Andrea, is that what you guys do too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is also an option for folks who do want to see everything in Basecamp. Click on activity and then on upcoming dates. It'll pull every every date, every due date, every card with a due date and any kind of meetings um, all in one location from all the projects you're a part of. So if I was only a part of two projects, then I would only see the, you know, all those grouped dates together for those two projects. But if Kimberly was a part of 15, she would see all of those dates for all those 15 projects in the, uh, that particular location. And you can subscribe to this one as well. So you have a lot of choice if you want it to be super personal or a lot more broad. Okay, Ashley, I'm going to go to something I mentioned earlier, which is viewing a change log in Docs yeah. and Files. I mentioned that when Andrea was showing how we upload documents for people. Um, but there's a way to see what has changed. And I'll have Ashley show you that. And then we'll knock out these last two questions before we wrap up. Yeah, I think I've prepared one here. So Andrea was showing earlier that there is an option down here to um, replace with a new version. Fantastic choice. Highly recommend. And that way, if you need to see all of your versions, that link is there. And you can see which one is current, when it was uploaded, um, on what day. Someone may have uploaded the wrong thing. And so they went ahead and replaced it. So there's the original from, the, uh, from 2022. Then we have something in April. And then now we have the most recent one. And Basecamp tracks your storage, but we actually only track storage for the most recent file. So it's okay to continually update your files with this replace option if you need to and still have the option to go back to the older ones. That's great. Okay. I actually don't know the answer to this question. So Ashley, I kind of hope that you do. Can you embed Basecamp into websites? You cannot. You okay. cannot. Basecamp is a web-based and it's hosted only on um, our servers. So there is no way to kind of take it and put it into another, another platform, but um, hopefully we've made it very accessible so that you can either use it from any, any browser that's up to date. Um, we also have a good number of apps. So there is a desktop app for Windows, for Mac, and then for Android and iPhone, we have dedicated apps and fantastic teams that work to make, so that, make it so that what you see on the web is like, 99% identical to what you get on your phone too. And we just made some updates to the iPad app that people are loving. So yeah. that also is, is exciting. Okay, um, Bethany, I think this one might be for you. What are your favorite sor sourcing resource for finding candidates right now? I know that we get a lot of people coming to us versus us having to go to the outside world, but maybe you wanna tackle that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so we are super fortunate in the fact that um, we do have a lot of candidates coming to us. Um, you know, we share it on like a job posting newsletter um, and it, that goes out to, you know, quite a few people. Um, we'll share it on some niche job boards and then, of course, on social media. Um, our team will, you know, put that out as well. Um, there are times where we do source for very, very specific skill sets that we're looking for. Um, and that typically is through LinkedIn, and that's our primary source. Um, I've also used Seek Out and uh, highly recommend that as well. Okay, friends, it is the top of the hour. It is time for us to leave. Thank you for joining us. A couple of things um, before we wrap up. If you have any further questions about things that we've talked about or things that we've missed or questions come up, please don't be afraid to reach out to us. Let me put our email address here on the screen, it is guides at basecamp.com. That'll get you to Ashley and other very qualified folks on the support team. So if there's anything that comes up, please reach out. Even if it's just, how do you do something? What's the best way to get something set up? That is the expert line for us. And then I also wanna put in the chat, Laura, if you don't mind dropping in the chat, 
Basecamp community. So we do have a group, surprise, surprise, it is running Basecamp, of people who are longtime Basecamp users along with some new users who get together and share advice and their own expert opinions. So that is a great place if you're looking for other Basecamp users to connect with. And we'll put a link to that in the chat where you can find them. It is a simple application process, if you will, just fill out a little survey form and we invite people into that community. So with that, thank you guys for joining us. Like I said, this link to the recording will be sent out to you by email and it will be available right here where you joined us before. Bethany, Andrea, thank you. Ashley, thank you as always.